What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. You know how some of those flashy new cars have cameras built into their rear view mirrors, but you're sitting here in your 2011 Nissan Murano and you really want one, but you just don't have one. Well, now you do. That's right, we're gonna be looking at the Yuki, 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 we'll go with Yuki. M11 11 inch 4K mirror dash cam. Now, Yuki was nice enough to send me this unit for review. They are not influencing my review in any way, shape or form. They simply provided the product for me for review. Now let's quickly go over all the features of the product. It's nicely laid out on this very, very nicely designed and sturdy box that it came in. I've got an unboxing here quickly to show you guys kind of what is on the inside because we'll be kind of glossing over that and more doing a setup and uh, kind of walkthrough video of it. But I do have this unboxing here so you can see everything that it comes with. So just quickly going over what we have on the box, it's an IPS HD full touch screen. So you can interact with everything on here via touch, which is super nice. You don't have to use an app or any clunky uh, dials or buttons or anything. Sony IMX 415 sensor. It has a GPS uh, unit that you can plug into it. It has a G sensor, which is basically a collision sensor. So that will detect when you are in any kind of collision and it will save those files so that they cannot be overwritten, which is a nice touch to have. Reversing assistant, which we'll take a look at, it has looping recording. So basically just as long as you, you know, keep the SD card in there, it will just continuously overwrite itself and keep you with the most up-to-date footage. It is an HDR uh, sensor built into that. It has Wi-Fi and you can go all the way up to 4K 30 FPS resolution. Now the M11 here retails for about $139, but there is a $30 coupon on Amazon currently. So you can pick this up for just around $110. And if you did want to support the channel, definitely check the link in the description. I'll have an Amazon affiliate link. If you pick one of these up using my link, I'll get a little kickback. It helps the channel. So I really appreciate that uh, if you guys are interested in picking one up for yourself. So those are all the product highlights on the box. Again, it's very nicely designed, sturdy box. It's a nice, well-built product. It feels sturdy. And I've actually already got it installed here. Now the installation process is a breeze. I've got a clip here on screen showing you exactly how to do it. But basically you get these little rubber attachers that will clip onto the clips on the back. So you put it over your existing rear view mirror and then you use the little rubber attachers on the clips on the bottom to hold it snug to the mirror. The camera module on the left side actually slides out. So if you have like a longer mirror and you need more clearance to make that camera poke through, you can pop it out a little bit more to fit your specific size mirrors. Mine is even a little bit curved on my bolt here and it still fits just fine over top of it. Now let's talk about the other things that you can plug into it. It does come with a 32 gig SD card plugged in for recording. Now of the things that you can plug in, like I said, there is the GPS module, uh, which is right here. And this has a little bit of adhesive on the bottom so you can mount it up, you know, up on your windshield to get good GPS connection. So it will know, you know, where you're at and it will show little coordinates on the screen. The next thing that you plug in is obviously the power connector. It's a mini USB type B cable and that plugs into your little 12 volt uh, cigarette lighter outlet down there and it has a USB port out on it as well. If you still need to do things like charge your phone through it, you won't lose that functionality there. And then finally, you have the rear view camera as well that you can plug in. Now it plugs in with just a little 3.5 millimeter looking plug. It's not exactly that, but it's got a super long cord that is already run all the way to the back of my vehicle. It also has a little lead out line, a red wire that you can plug into your reverse light so it knows kind of uh, to do the reverse guiding and things like that if you want to set all that up. Now, I didn't set that up. I didn't want to get into rewiring my reverse light, especially on a newer vehicle like this. I didn't want to mess anything up on my new bolt here. And that is also why I didn't really do a ton of what you would consider cable management. It's all just kind of hanging out here, which obviously if you were setting this up in a more permanent type of situation, you would not uh, probably do this because it's a cluttered mess. Now for the rear camera, it comes with a couple of mounting options. You can use the adhesive like I did here to basically just stick it to your back windshield. But if you want to go with mounting option two, which they have clearly laid out in the user manual here, you can use the screws to mount it up underneath kind of where a regular traditional rear view camera would be. And really the only other physical things you do have a little uh, mic right here that will pick up sound and you have a light sensor that will help with um, 
you know, adjusting the brightness of the display automatically. And then you have a power button that you can just press here, hold it down. And then when it's off, it functions exactly like a normal mirror, which is what most of those rear view mirror cameras do if you disable them. Additionally, inside of the booklet here, you will see a little QR code for their app. It's the Udo Cam app, YouTube Cam app. Uh, they have it for iOS and Android, and you can connect it to your phone. It uses the Wi-Fi standard to connect to your device, but uh, once you do get it set up and connected, you can uh, view clips, save clips to your phone, change different camera settings if you want to. I will say out of full transparency, it is not one of the nicer apps that I've ever used. It's pretty uh, old school looking, but it does work. So uh, if that is the most important thing to you, it definitely does work and you can use it for that reason. I probably wouldn't use it too often unless I wanted to specifically go in and save a clip that I didn't want to get off of my computer. But other than that, I would rather just adjust all the settings on the display itself. All right, so taking a look at the screen itself, it's a decently high resolution screen. You know, there's uh, not a ton of difference in my view from the 4K options, the 2K options, and the 1080p options. I really do wish they would have given you a higher frame rate at those lower resolutions. So you are capped at 30 FPS in all three of those resolutions, 4K, 2K, and 1080p. It would have been nice if the 1080 was like a 60 FPS or even higher than that or something like that, but unfortunately just 30 FPS. But you do get a little bit of bump in resolution that could help with seeing things more clearly like license plates or uh, more fine details like that. The controls are as follows. You have this little software joystick on the left side that you can basically use to raise and lower the position of the camera. It's cropping and, and moving around on the camera itself. So you don't get the full output of the image. It's more of a squeezed wide angle view that you can kind of adjust to your liking, depending on what position that you want it at. So if you have a little bit of a taller car and a, and a wider front hood, you might want to bump it up a little bit. If you have a lower car, you might want to slide it down a little bit so that it faces the road in front of you but you can adjust it however you like with that little software slider right there or little joystick. Above that, you do have your resolutions. You have how much time is remaining on your SD card. You have your date and time, and then you have what devices are connected. So I have the rear camera connected, the G sensor is enabled, the GPS is plugged in, and then I am plugged into USB and it's charging. All those icons are on the top right. Down at the bottom, you have the microphone button, so you can mute that if you want. Very loud beep, by the way. You can take a photo just by pressing the photo button. You can start the recording manually by hitting the record button right there. Access your settings with the settings. You can play back clips on the device, which is super handy if you wanna quickly look at something. Just hit this little play button right here. It will pull up all of your video directory right there and you can select one, you can view it, you can delete it, all kinds of good stuff right there. And then you have the lock button. If you press the lock button, it's gonna do an urgent recording. So it's gonna record whatever's happening at that exact moment and then it's gonna lock that in so it does not get recorded over in the loop recording process. Then on the far right side, you have a brightness uh, slider basically that you can slide up and down if the, you know, if the mirror's too bright or whatnot and you wanna dim that down at night. All that adjustment is easy right there. Now, a feature that you wouldn't notice from first glance is that you can actually swipe on this display. So if you want to access the rear view camera or do a split screen, you're just going to swipe from the right side of the screen. So let's try that here. So if we swipe over once, we're going to get access to that rear view camera. Uh, and then I can swipe again. I'm going to get access to a split screen view, which allows you to see both devices at the same time, which is super helpful because when you are using this in the normal, just front facing dash cam mode, it's hard to see behind you because you don't have a rear view mirror anymore unless you turn the device off altogether. So being able to see these side by side and see what's behind your vehicle is super helpful. Now let's dive into the settings real quick. We have the resolution option, so you can uh, hit that. I mean, my God, that is so loud. I gotta turn that down. You know, what? I'm gonna turn the beep off altogether. You can do that, that's really nice. All right, so in the resolution, you have 4K, which is 3840 by 2160, 2K, 2560 by 1440, and then HD, uh, which is just 1920 by 1080. You can adjust all of that. You can change your recording segments. Uh, I've had a lot of people ask me about this on my other dash cam videos. You do have HDR here, turn that off or on. I would definitely leave that on. It's gonna help with your image, especially in a lot of changing lighting conditions, like coming out from under trees into the bright sun, things like that. Speaker volume, we just kind of talked about that. I turned that off. G sensor, you can change the sensitivity of this. So if you're in a, a vehicle that's a little bit more smooth, maybe you wanna turn that sensor up to high so it really detects you know, unknown impacts or, or, or different feeling collisions. If you're driving something that's a little bit more off-roadsy and things like that, or it doesn't have the best you know, suspension system, maybe you wanna turn that down to low 
so that you don't get, you know, these locked urgent collision recordings all the time just because your vehicle is a little bit more unstable. Screensaver is basically just going to do a screensaver after about uh, a minute, but you can put it as one minute, three minutes, five minutes or off date and time. Self-explanatory, change that. Rear screen flip, uh, if you've got the camera upside down, it will just flip it around. Language you can change. You can change the frequency of the display from 50 hertz to 60 hertz. 60 hertz is the standard here in the US, but if you go uh, you know, across the pond and things like that, they use 50 hertz, so we'll leave it at 60. Now the parking monitor option that you have on the camera requires additional hardware to connect it, and I don't have that kit that it requires, but if you do read about it here in the little manual, it says when the camera is on, it will automatically start recording 20 seconds of urgent video. So kind of watch out your camera and record if things happen in front of it uh, that it needs to, you know, if you get hit when you're in a parking spot or something like that. You do have a format button for your SD card. So if you want to just wipe it and start from scratch, you can. And then you have a screen brightness option. So you can switch between that manual mode that I talked about where you have the slider on the right side or auto, which will use that sensor up underneath the camera that we talked about earlier. So I'll leave it on, let's go to auto. That, that'll probably work well. So that is everything inside of the settings option, which it's a ton and having it all very clearly laid out, accessible and easy with that touch screen option is a fantastic feature in and of itself. I, I think I like the implementation of a dash cam and a smart rear view mirror better than your traditional dash cam. It's less cluttered. If you were to actually, you know, do some cable management on this, it would definitely be less cluttered, but it's just up and out of the way. And it doesn't stick on your front windshield itself and kind of add additional clutter there. So I like this implementation a lot. High dynamic range makes a huge difference. And a lot of dash cams have this, so it's not exclusive to this, uh, this M11 here, but having that high dynamic range in the changing lighting situations is super important to get a nice, clear, saturated, pretty image. And you definitely get that here out of this little dash cam. So I'll have clips here on screen for you guys so you can see it for yourself in all different lighting situations. I've got it in broad daylight. I've got it here at sunset. And then I have some nighttime driving footage so you can see kind of how it performs at night and having it uh, auto dim and, and have that kind of good stuff at night is really nice as well. So thanks so much for watching guys. Drop a like on the video if you loved it. Tell me in the comments down below, what do you think about the M11 4K mirror dash cam? Let's have a conversation down in the comments and don't forget to hit that subscribe button to be one of the first to see every single new video the second I hit publish. We'll see you in the next one.